here today because I'm sure she would have preferred to spend another weekend in Norway with her daughter. So thank you very much, Nira, for making it here today. Gabi, who has known uh, Mira for longer than myself, to introduce Mira to us. Thank you, Gabi. Right. Welcome, everybody, to the wind organized uh, luncheon, as well from my side. So I have the great honor and pleasure to introduce Mira Venkatesh, who is the director of uh, INNA, Nuclear Sciences and Applications in the Physics and Chemistry Division. Now, your predecessor, and all of you, or some of you might know that once upon a time, I was also a director in NA. So your predecessor was actually my twin brother, because we were born the same day and the same year. <laughs> Although he was in India and I in Germany, but, uh, but nevertheless, so we always had very close connections. Now, Vera, when she was appointed as uh, the new director in APC, I got many emails from my friends at the Baba Center who said, oh, you should contact Vera, she's a great woman, she's a strong woman, and she will be really making all the difference in relation to gender in the agency. So I was very happy when she joined and took over the directorship. Now Mira, as said, she is coming from the spirit of the Baba Center. And now I know a little bit more because I visited the Baba Center twice during my time in NA and got an idea what is being done there. It's a highly sophisticated research center uh, working also in the nuclear field but having on their place much more than that. But it's the Baba Atomic Research Center and it has several thousand people and not only in Mumbai but also in other areas as I was told. So, and she still has a lot of students back home which she is supporting to reach their degrees in uh, PhD degrees in chemistry and life sciences. Now she is also, she has published numerous papers as probably every one of us has done being on that uh, degree and grade. And uh, she is also editor in a couple of scientific journals, all dealing with radio pharmaceuticals and the production of radio isotopes. Now you might remember a couple of years ago there was a, an easy debate about the production, the shortage of production of radio isotopes, which are used in the application of human health and are very important for the peaceful use of nuclear applications and nuclear energy and uh, sciences at large. So I again warm welcome to Mera who will give her quite something about non-scientific or social, more social related and we all look forward to hear your uh, speech about violence against women from an Indian woman perspective. Thank you Mera. and good afternoon to all of you and uh, very happy Women's Day, International Women's Day. Uh, as uh, Eva said or uh, I think yeah, Eva said that I was preferring to talk about nuclear applications <laughs> but then uh, this topic was preferred and in fact Janice once said we can go to such talk so many places, it's alright but here we would like to uh, listen to people's personal views or you know, something more personal than just some um, scientific topic. So I was actually pointing just talking what's happening, why it is happening, unless we have some idea of how to prevent it. Maybe um, maybe we cannot prevent it or maybe we cannot completely remove it. But at least some kind of sensitivity, uh, some direction which we can draw from our own, you know, colleagues. And being in this uh, place, uh, it feels nice in two ways. One is, sometimes I used to feel very um, depressed or bad that why is it happening, particularly the recent days. I thought that this uh, topic and the recent Delhi case have a, a good connection. People will immediately remember if I say, you know, what happened to the Delhi case? Many of us, we 
particularly bad and sad about it. And, but then when uh, then you go back and you know, what is the statistics, what happened was to maintain the family, too much work or you know what are the reasons? Getting into the wrong uh, uh, what to say habit of consuming too much alcohol and then okay, the family has less money. The woman as well as the man have the same problem. How to bring up the children, how to manage, how to make the food for the next time. But then it is the man who takes to the alcohol and then he refers to forget the whole thing by doing that. The woman has to beg him for money and then get eaten. This I have seen many times in some slums and things like that. I'm not sure how much it has improved but I'm, I think those things are also um, not on the rise definitely but it may be there, but not so much. I have heard, I mean, and also before I spoke here, I started collecting some data on how much, what the Wikipedia says, or you just put a Google there to see. So one thing is that all such violence, you know, domestic abuse and all, seem to be in different forms in different countries, and the numbers are really mind-boggling. And some of the tortures which I have uh, read, I mean, I don't even want to spend time on that, but it is, uh, unimaginable, unimaginable. And I think uh, this the net and all these uh, media, social media, people when they come to know, they, uh, the good thing is they come to know about it, but I think the um, bad thing about it is people think that they have got another immediately. I would like to be proud and I would like to see to be losing all right if it is possible. Of course, whatever we learn, we would like to pass on that they are maybe this thing works. So, uh, so, as I said, India is a very complex uh, scenario with uh, more than 1.2 billion population, almost uh, 35 territories, 28 states, union territory, etc. Major, six major religions, thousands of uh, dialects spoken, 22 official languages, and uh, four different ethnicities. And we have diverse social systems. For example, uh, we have some places where they worship, uh, I mean, religion is one of the major, uh, what to say, factors in social life. And uh, uh, if I say that uh, in West Bengal, let's say, which is uh, the other western side of North West, the, the goddess is worshipped the maximum. I mean, the goddess Dugga is called the, the biggest power and worshipped by everybody. And the rest of the place may be different, different deities, etc. The rape, which uh, the, the number of rape in West Bengal is nearly tenfold lower than the other places. I mean, the people are also respected. In fact, West Bengal women are very strong. They are, they have the last word in the family many times. But uh, the violence is much lesser. So it has uh, the the minute thing in a society has influence on how it comes out in the their social behavior also. So, uh, when you look at the issues related, the next one, uh, related to the violence, one will be the female to male ratio. Like when we were discussing Eva was telling, you know the male to female ratio is uh, very high in India. I said, no, no, I, I see in my own families, I know how many daughters are born, you know, it was, uh, I know that there is a problem with, because of the female to side, but I never realized the way the numbers were until I went and again looked at the statistics published by Indian government. If you look again, it varies for the country. It varies for every thousand males. Somewhere close to thousand females are there in the south of India, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu. Kerala, in fact, has thousand and eighteen males for every thousand females. Whereas, if you look at the same numbers for the northern India on the northwest side, it will be close to eight hundred: Chandigarh, Haryana, Jammu, Kashmir, Punjab, etc. So this, this kind of, you know, lopsided thing, of course, I also read another analysis saying that sometimes in the, in, in societies there can be up and down in the ratio. That is a different kind of statistic. But we do know, I think, the causes of the down. So one was even the influence of, uh, you know, uh, very um, unrealistic situations which are presented in the movies, etc. So these are the things which perhaps cause changes in the young mind and, and but then, you know, it, there is no one single way to stop those things. It is it's, it's more of the realization and uh, finding out how, how one can do it, uh, I mean, one can meet 
gate door thing. May have me. So this the next one I think is the two uh, two Indian maps, is it? Yeah. It's just to show that you know we have a varied um, density of population, varied uh, education levels in different cities, etc. Just to give a feel, that's all. The next one, please. So um, further, if you see why female species and why the number of males, it's primarily because it's a patriarchal society. If you look at uh, India, the Kerala, which is there, it, it has a lot of matriarchal society. You straight away see the proportion is uh, even more than one. And I think the patriarchal society is not just the patriarchal. They want the business to be followed and then the, you know, the money to be kept. I think the money and power are two things which are very corrupting. So the, the person wants the money, the land, the wealth to be within the family, then the son will be the, you know, the carrying carry the whole thing. That's because it is so much set in, the patriarchal thing. I think that's the cause for female suicide because they want somebody to take over the business. And interestingly, another uh, thing I noticed, uh, many people think that tribal, we have a huge number of tribes, a lot of people living in mountains and small tribes. Many people thought they were the ones who were looking for uh, boys because long ago if you think, if you imagine China and those places, they wanted boys to work in the fields and bring money, in, right? If that was it. But it's not true. The tribal women take the child as a God-given gift, whether it's a girl or boy. Many times it is a big business people who want, who want to calculate and have their business. So these are all, these are all something um, very deeply rooted and uh, I think the only way that can be removed is by education. So even the, it's not only the patriarchal society inadequate sex education, which the government is taking action now, and uh, this, uh, it's going to be a little more different kind of education which is coming up and sensitivity to gender issues. I think this education, um, a child learns from home, what they see in the home and around and whatever in the neighborhood etc. So whatever is taught in the class is one thing and what is being uh, happening around is another way of education. I think uh, the education is... Um, Together it requires the army and the police to come to stop the kind of uh, the upright which started. Say okay, the, the incident happening is one thing, but the whole society coming up and uh, opposing it, I thought that something was nice. It is not just that uh, there are aberrations, there are problems, but there is a sensitivity and when somebody has said that enough is enough. I think uh, in fact I saw that uh, the, the title, a promise is a promise, time for action to end, to end violence against women is the, is the theme for um, uh, International Women's Day by the UN. So it's like, okay, enough is enough, we have, uh, we have to stop this and that is what was uh, shown by the, the whole nation coming together and, and then the government had to take action, set up a immediately, uh, uh, can show the next picture, I think the one uh, where the the, the police and the army are trying to lucky charge and push them behind and you can see the women holding you know teach your sons and men to respect every girl and woman so it has to start at home I mean that's real life because you I, I, I didn't clearly remember when I was a young girl week, which is astonishing because they didn't touch just that they touched our police system they touched our uh, political system they, they touch many of those things which are weak, which are need to be reformed. And it was a very, very honest, uh, good uh, report, which perhaps in the long run if it implemented well, it will. But then you always know politics is one entirely different thing. Police force is another thing, the army force is another thing, and the judicial force. So this is like a, you know, it's not always against each other, but they are all have to be matched. The priorities are different, the compulsions are different perhaps. But um, from a, any, as an individual, I thought that it was a good uh, reaction, it was a knee-jerking reaction perhaps, as some people said, because one of my colleagues, why are they making such a big fuss in India for this? It happens everywhere. It is not so much. And so it happens, but then at least it's good somebody is awakening. Because immediately afterwards when it happened in South Africa, there were people who were protesting. So, it is not just, uh, we cannot just shut our eyes 
and uh, violence I don't think we can stop or we are basically weaker in uh, strength. We don't have the testosterone. But we are uh, much more tolerant, we are much more compassionate I think. And this, we have to be together because when it comes to this uh, pride burning or those things, I used to think it's not just the men who are violent. It's also the women sometimes. The women then, due to jealousy also, there are crimes against women. There are a mother-in-law kind of attitude which is, <laughs> uh, which is put as a you know, typical attitude. But that we only have to change. So I think that, uh, that much of wisdom and the tolerance and, uh, and the kind of compassion should have to, have to be you know, sort of evoked in people, I think. So I think the sensitization, in fact, I just read it. Uh, that uh, the government is also now trying to put, uh, I mean, keep programs where they will go to grassroots levels, spread people, employ people to, uh, to do these kind of um, education, to say how the world is and what should be the, in the long run, what a woman is and how they should be sensitive to the other sex, etc. So there are two programs that are Ahimsa. Ahimsa means no, uh, no violence, non-violence, peaceful. And the other one is about, um, uh, Saksha, so for the holistic development of young people because they are now it is even more with all the internet and easy uh, way to view things sometimes in a society which doesn't have certain kind of social norms to get exposed to something very different in another end of the world people think they should do all those things you know there is there is a little um, what to say instability in their thinking and mind to to make them develop holistically there are programs which are taken up and I think such are the ways which we may have to go ahead and I mean as I said again from an Indian perspective perhaps the others will have their own um, see, the next one please. this one I would like to just share as the last one so based on that uh, incident there are a lot of non-governmental organizations, women's organizations everybody who is taking up the cause that people have to be empowered so in fact uh, one of the ministers said that one way to prevent, I mean, one way to make the men respect women is to be empowering them. They are in the big position, so at least for the position and power there will be. And then slowly the uh, image that they are all supposed to be sitting at home and cooking and washing things, etc. will go away. But uh, this girl, who is uh, Amrita, you know, she attended a, a conference or whatever, a big speech, one billion writing. You know, everybody writes and protests against anything which is wrong, non-violence. <laughs> violence against women should be protested at all. So this girl was uh, coming back from uh, that uh, lecture, was having tea in some tea shop with her parents and some poor hoodlums or whatever, they passed bad remarks and they were uh, trying to tease her and she said, no, don't tease and if you want to, uh, you should not be teasing or she must have entered into an argument. They continued and they pulled her father into a fight. So then she went and gave a good beating to those Poor fellows. She was a karate black belt expert. So she put them all, she put them down and she made them go to the, um, you know, hospital for treatment. So she was a brave woman and perhaps uh, self, you know, self defense is one thing and teaching is another thing. So I think as an urgent and immediate thing is for us to uh, educate, to ask, I mean, Tell our children, tell our brothers and colleagues and friends how uh, how important it is to consider the other sex as the same. Yeah, I also have known violence by the women, but in the sense from paper articles etc. But this kind of a thing where a hapless child or a woman is, you know, hit or uh, committed violence upon is something which is very sad. And I hope this is just a thought and from my own end, I have told my <laughs> people that yes, and I, my own experience has been very good, both in Al-Haba or wherever. There has been good respect and as I say, I have never felt even the soft kind of, only once in a way I used to hear some remark and immediately I will give it back. So somebody says, oh, come on, who's that? Ah, oh, all the female species are useless. Maybe for, uh, you know, uh, insects and something like that. So yeah, except the human species perhaps. <laughs> Because you know that even the disrespect, we should not allow it to come in and we should be sensitive and you know sort of uh, prepare for the next generation. I don't know how we can mitigate whatever has happened.
ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಕಾಯ್ತಿಕೊಳ್ಳುತ್ತೇವೆ